Hi, parents of and students in the Alpha Scholars Program cohort of 2025. Woo woo. <laughs> Welcome to our informational video for your senior year. Uh, my name is Mr. Wilson. I'm the Alpha Scholars Counselor, if you don't know who I am. And I am Mrs. Wilson, um, the Alpha Scholars Program Coordinator, and then your English teacher from last year. Miss you guys. <laughs> so what we're going to do in the next few minutes is just kind of cover some updates so that parents and students are on the same page with um, with what the senior year is going to look like and kind of like what our timeline looks like. Okay, here we go. All right. All right. So just a quick overview of where we have been with um, the additional supports and opportunities that you have had from the Alpha program. Ninth grade, you guys got to go to USC and UCLA. Do you remember that? It was awesome. And then in 10th grade, we went to those San Diego colleges and it just rained on our heads, but we had the best time anyway. Last year, we went to uh, NorCal and um, visited some college, like all of those college visits, whereas they are fun and they're bonding time, really an opportunity for students to be able to get onto different campuses, see, um, does this feel like me? Do they offer my major? Are, are these my people that I see around me? So um, all of that, we're gonna have one more trip this year to a couple of Orange County colleges, and that will be uh, probably late September, early October. But again, just for you guys to be able to see uh, maybe colleges that you thought you were really excited about um, or introduce you to some colleges maybe that you hadn't even thought about before, just to see what's gonna be a good fit for you. Last year, we had zero period once a week for SAT prep, college research, um, starting your, those PIQs, which are done and beautiful at this point. Am I right? Uh, so, and then this year, we will be starting zero period in the next couple of weeks to polish those PIQs, to work on those college applications, to talk about financial aid and scholarships and um, your best buddies this year for zero period are going to be Mr. Wilson and Mr. Wynn. And along the way, for all the grades in for nine through 12, that college career guidance, the grade monitoring, so filling out those grade checks, um, opportunity to sample a lot of different AP curriculum, um, the community service, as far as like where you guys are supposed to um, those, those checkpoints of how far along the way you should be with your community service. And man, every time that we found out about a great opportunity, especially if it was on campus, making sure to get that information out to you guys so that you could um, continue to get those hours, that grade level advisor check-in, which um, I'll talk more about uh, later on what that will look like this year. And of course, that one-on-one -on -one for your plan guidance that you have gotten from Mr. Wilson. So. The Alpha Scholars Program, um, we just, uh, we are really excited about the opportunities that we have to support you guys in your post high school um, plans. Yeah, all right. Okay, so um, just to kind of give everybody a quick overview of what the college application timeline looks like and what we're shooting for. Um, at this point, uh, students should already have a finalized college list of where they want to apply. And if they um, if that isn't completely nailed down yet, we'll be doing that first thing in zero period when we start up because we um, obviously we should know where we're applying before we apply. In a perfect world, um, we want students applying to a broad uh, number of, of college. Well, OK, a varied number of colleges. So that the question that comes up every year is how many colleges should I be applying to? And that's there's no like quick and easy formula to that. But I will tell you that many of our students will qualify for um, for fee waivers for the uh, Cal State applications. And if that's the case, we want them doing four of those because that's how many fee waivers you get. Um, if they do not qualify for the UC application fee waiver, I can do what's called a NACAC fee waiver for um, for students. And so they can get four of those. Um, for uh, for free, like covered, and then they may or may not be applying to schools through the Common Application, which is the system that is used for many of the private schools and out-of-state schools. So, and Common Application stuff, I can do fee waivers for every school that's on there. So, so um, 
some students will have to pay for some of the Cal State applications if they do not qualify for the fee waiver directly in their system. There's nothing that I can do on my end for that. They either meet the magic formula or they don't, and then they have to pay for those. I do know that last year the district paid for two Cal State applications, and we're working right now with the district to, to hopefully be in the same situation for that. But in general, we do want our Alpha Scholar students applying to Cal States and UCs and then a lot of them will be doing common application um, as well because they're interested in some of those prestigious schools that are outside of our state system. So Cal State applications, we want to have those done before the end of October. It is the easiest of all of the applications because, um, because they do not have to do any writing for that. Um, it's, it's really just a matter of actually doing the application and putting in their different classes and grades. The UC applications are a lot more extensive because the PIQs are involved in that and then other steps. And so we're gonna shoot to have those done before Thanksgiving break. Um, and then FAFSA, if I'm crossing my fingers right now, last year, if you guys are aware at all, FAFSA like for the for the entire nation was just a garbage fire. Um, they uh, the the federal government completely redid the FAFSA process last year, and it was a nightmare. They are saying that we should be back on track with normal deadlines for FAFSA and when things are going to be open and all that kind of stuff. So we're really hoping that they have figured that stuff out. And if they have, we're going to shoot to have all of our Alpha students have their FAFSA stuff done before Christmas break. Um, usually their system doesn't open until December 1st. So we will obviously let you know more about that when we know it. Um, and then common application is going to be the last thing we do because most of the schools in common application unless students are doing like early decision stuff most of those uh, deadlines are not until december or january and so i'm going to ask the students who are doing common application to add their schools at the beginning so that we kind of know when the deadlines are but then we'll be doing that stuff last okay so that's just a quick overview of what the timeline looks like so everybody knows um kind of what we're jumping into here okay um we will be doing most of that stuff through zero period and i'll talk about that here in a sec okay all right so transcripts parents and students if you don't know this please know this um you can access transcripts on parent or on parent view and on student view if you go to the course history section there should be a little button at the top to run a transcript it updates every week um things that you should be looking at as a senior are graduation requirements like what else is still needed for graduation we're starting our senior check-in process next week so i'll be meeting with all the seniors one one to review transcripts and then I'll finish that up in zero period um, just to make sure we're okay for graduation. For alpha students, this really shouldn't be an issue unless you've got like some weird PE stuff we still need to get covered through sports or whatever, but we'll be talking about that. But anyway, definitely look at graduation requirements, make sure we're doing okay. And then the GPA summary, and this actually looks a little different this year because they've actually put the unweighted GPA on the transcripts as well, finally, which is really good. But there are GPAs on there that you need to know. The weighted overall all GPA is everything that they've done while they've been in high school. All honors and AP classes are weighted, and that's all calculated in there. UC and Cal State GPA starts with 10th grade. It's only the uh, the A through G classes that they have taken, and then the weighting as it's done through Cal State and UC. And then the Cal Grant GPA is only 10th and 11th grade, and it's a non-weighted GPA, and that is basically how they are eligible for Cal Grant A or Cal Grant B. So we have really been honing in with all of our students this year, uh, last year, to make sure that they understand what the Cal Grant GPA is, because that GPA is really important in the FAFSA process. And I think when Mrs. Wilson and I were looking at this, it looks like all of our seniors have at least a 3.0 Cal Grant GPA, which is really good news, okay? Because basically what that means, just to kind of explain the process a little bit, is when students do their FAFSA, they are asking the federal government and the state government for money, for financial aid for school, okay? They only have to do one thing, which is the FAFSA, but that's federal money and, and California money. If they go to school in California next year, California money is called Cal Grant. In order to be eligible for that, you have to have Cal Grant A is a 3.0 or higher on that Cal Grant GPA, and we upload all of those GPAs so students won't need to do anything for that. And then, um, and then the income ceilings are set for parents, so depending upon how much money you make, um, is whether or not students are eligible for that. I pulled the income ceilings yesterday. This is what they look like right now for uh, for the 25-26 school year. So basically, um, you can look and see how big your uh, your family is. Cal Grant A stuff is right here. 
Um, so if, for example, if your student, if you guys are a family of four, hold on here, sorry, computer's being silly. If you guys are a family of four, it means that uh, mom and dad can make up to $135,000 and student can still qualify for Cal Grant A. So it's a nice high amount. Cal Grant A is nice. You'll notice that the amounts are very different for Cal Grant B and then the reward for Cal Grant B is a lot lower too, but thankfully this won't be any of our students, okay? So that's what Cal Grant money looks like. We can talk more about this and we will talk more about this in zero period, but if you have individual questions, you can feel free to reach out directly to me. If you'd like to know what Cal Grant amounts look like, this is what they look like for 22, 23. I was looking to see if I could find more recent data, but I have not been able to. But basically in 22 and 23, Cal Grant A for a Cal State was $5,742 per year. For a UC, it was $13,000 per year. And for a private, it was $9,000. Guys, what, um, what Cal Grant is trying to do is to meet the tuition requirements. So what I'm going to tell you is, is that if a student ends up staying home and going to like UC Riverside or Cal State San Bernardino or Cal State um, Pomona because, because that's just how money worked out and that's you know what, what was being offered, what's beautiful about Cal Grant is that they really do meet most of the need as far as um, as far as that goes so again if you have any questions about that you can let me know but that's why those gpas are so important and you definitely want to take a look at the transcript and see where you sit okay all right cool cool so as we think about our senior year some of the upcoming um fun things that we are looking forward to one of course is the the oc college trip but then um at the end of this year when you are walking with your cap and gown, that stole. Um, and all the different academic organizations that you're involved in may involve a stole, and, and we are one of those. So in order for you to um, earn that stole from Alpha, you've been in, you know, for however many years that you've been in Alpha, but you need to meet these requirements in order to, to earn that stole. So first of all, we will be uh, getting the alpha agreements out again that we resign every year. It talks about, you know, meeting that 3.85 GPA, um, making sure that your citizenship at school looks good and um, that you're doing the community service, like all of that. So the agreement, getting that in and signed. So zero period attendance is definitely tied to that for the stole and for the trips that you guys, for that, for that one trip this year, making sure that you uh, are attending zero period. And we'll talk more about zero period in just a moment. You have a total of 60 hours of community service that you need to have finished by uh, a certain date. So let me explain that. For the Orange County college trip, I need to see at least 45 hours that you have documented with Mr. Fitzsimmons, okay, before we go on that trip to be eligible. And then in order for you to be able to get the stole, your 60 hours of community service need to be completed before spring break. So let's say spring break is, I don't know, March 20th, March 19th is your deadline to have all 60 hours of community service in because that is when we are turning in our stole order and we really want all of you to have that. Um, additionally, for the Orange County College trip, I know it's going to be in early October, maybe late September. If you have any absences up to that point, they need to be made up beforehand during Step Up Saturdays. Because if the school is going to be paying for our bus and, and all the things that this requires, they, they are asking us to do our part, which is making up those absences because that's how we get our money. Makes sense. Okay. And guys, if you have questions about the community service stuff, please let us know sooner rather than later because we really do want to help you figure yep. that stuff out now rather than later. We don't want you stressed out about that. We know this is something that you've been doing for a while. Um, yeah, okay. Um, zero period, so guys, um, hopefully you know this from last year, but we do not hold zero periods just to hold zero periods. Like we want it to be a value or we're not gonna do it. So we do have a plan for how we do zero periods. And like Mrs. Wilson mentioned earlier, it's gonna be myself and Mr. Wen who will be organizing these and kind of running things. But um, in general, um, 
we're going to, I think I changed the number on the next slide and didn't change it here, but we're going to have about 13 sessions. Um, we're wanting for first semester for you to uh, attend at least 11 of those. So obviously I understand if you're sick and you miss a couple of them or have something come up, but for the most part, we need you to prioritize what's going on in zero period. Second semester, we're going to have seven, minimum of five. Um, guys, what we're doing in zero period is college applications, scholarship stuff, PIQs, FAFSA, like all the stuff that is stressful for senior year. And we're trying to, to be available like once a week to make sure that we're handling that. Um, well, I don't, we're not planning on changing things up. Like last year's zero period for 11th grade was Tuesdays and seniors were Thursdays, and it's looking like we're going to roll with that as well. And you'll be hearing about the zero period here in the next week or so, like when we're going to start up, okay? Here's an overview of kind of what we're looking at. It's in general, it's, again, it's all the college stuff, the PIQs, the getting the applications done, the, uh, the FAFSA, the Common App, and, uh, and helping you guys with that process, okay? Um, and then semester two, we're having less sessions because at that point, most of the stuff is done. So the focus goes to more scholarship stuff, um, the senior portfolio process, and, uh, and then how we respond to schools that are accepting you and interpreting your financial offers and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So that's the plan with zero period. Anything to add for zero no. period? Okay. All right, um, so something that I know a lot of students are thinking right now is you took the SAT last year. Should you be retaking the SAT this year? The quick answer to that is maybe. Um, you can definitely retake it if you want a higher score. Um, if you're going to be sending it, like including it with any of your college applications, as of right now, UCs and Cal States are still not requiring. They won't even look at the, uh, the SATs. If that changes before those applications open up, I will absolutely let you know. Um, if you are applying to any schools through Common App or out of state and they want SATs, if you're not happy with your SAT score, you can absolutely retake it again. If you are going to retake your SAT, the magic deadline is before the end of December. Like after December, no college or program is going to care about your SAT score after that date. Okay. I know that some of that might sound a little confusing, like, wait, I'm doing college applications in like October and November, but I can still do the SAT in December. You absolutely can. It just those scores will be coming in after your application comes in, and then they'll look at that all together. Okay. Um, what you see up here is if you are applying to a UC and you're thinking about going to a UC, I included this information up there. That is the uh, entry level writing requirements for UCs. Um, the SATs can actually be really helpful for that. Okay. So you'll notice when you look at the, uh, at the entry level writing uh, requirement qualifying test scores, basically if you're going to a UC, in order to be ready to start in their English program there and their, and their classes that have writing requirements, you're going to have to prove that you're ready. Um, if you had, and it's right here, if you had a 680 on your SAT English portion, that will work. So um, if you got a three or higher on your AP test last year, that will work as well. So that might, that might be an information that makes you want to retake the SAT. I just kind of wanted to include that so you're aware of other, other places that the SAT might be important for kind of knowing how it's going to play into things. Okay. So just to clarify, or yeah, just to clarify, um, if you did not get a three on AP Lang last year, um, and if you did not get a 680 or higher on the um, SAT, you will be taking a writing test um, when you go to a UC. If you got that three or if you got that 680, you will not have to take the writing test for placement. They're just trying to decide if you are, are ready to go with a freshman English class. Yeah, and I know that's confusing, but uh, we, we wanted to provide this information to you in case you're thinking about retaking the SAT. Yeah. So if you have questions about that, again, let me know. Okay, guys, and just as a side note, this year is going to be hard and like we're trying really hard to make sure that it's not overly stressful for you, even though we're doing the zero period once a week. Please do not think that's the only time you can reach out if you've got questions. If you've got questions about the process, I'm always an email away or stopping in my office or, or even remind like whatever works, please reach out. Okay. All right, so scholarship stuff. I just want to kind of hit a couple things here for parents real quick because we'll be covering this in zero period. Um, the scholarship process is definitely work and it's definitely something that requires a, um, a schedule. And so as we're entering the season, it's, it's good for your student to be thinking about scholarships that they're going to apply to. Um, 
and it, it does require work. It absolutely does because they have to apply for these things. The good part is, though, is that once they start the scholarship application process, after they have some letters of rec and they've written a couple essays, they might start realizing that the stuff that they've got can be tweaked for other ones. And so once they kind of do the work at the front end, it'll hopefully be easier to, to apply to more and more places. In general, guys, um, applying for scholarships is kind of like buying lottery tickets. You, you don't just apply to one and then be surprised when you don't get it. Um, there are a ton of scholarships out there and we want students to apply for as many as possible um, so that so that they can hopefully have more odds for, uh, for getting things. Um, some of the big scholarships we're going to let everybody know about in zero period, like right off the bat. So that's like QuestBridge. That's um, that's the Bill Gates scholarship. And then there's another one that I always forget the name of. But anyway, there's there's three or four big ones that we'll let students know about that, that they are going to want to look and see if they meet the requirements and want to apply to those. And then there's a ton of little ones. All of the scholarship information is updated frequently on our College and Career Center website. So that's a good place to look. And then as we hear about things, we will also drop it in the, um, the alpha class uh, classroom, the Google classroom and let people know as well. OK, but parents, you can absolutely be asking your students the the most effective scholarships uh, applications are going to be students that put themselves on a schedule and they're applying, you know, like maybe one a week or something like that and not get stuff out. OK, um, yeah. So how many should you do as many as possible? Pretty sure I covered all this stuff. OK, OK. So um, I will be your advisor this year for the seniors. So even though you're not in my class, um, I'm going to try to meet with you guys um, on a fairly regular basis to set goals, check on your grades, your college applications, just see how you're doing as a human, how we can support you. So we will be having those advisory meetings and those will be starting soon as well. So at the end of all this, next slide, please. Sure. Um, back to school night is this next Thursday, August 22nd. And um, Mr. Wilson and I will be available in the Career Center from 5 to 5.30. So that's before all of the uh, back to school night festivities start. Um, so if you just want to drop in, you don't have to hang out. We're not doing any presentation because that's what this is all about. Um, so you can stop in any from 5 to 5.30, ask a question. Um, Otherwise, we are always, as Mr. Wilson said, an email away. So here's his, his email contact, my email contact. You guys were looking forward to a really great year. Senior year, it's a lot, but, um, but it's really special. Yep. You guys are going to have a great one. We got this. All right. See you soon. Thank you.